While the roll cast is very useful for fishing a nymph upstream, it's certainly not the only use for this cast. It's useful in a lot of other angling situations. For example, when you have brush close behind you like this, it would prevent other kinds of casts. The roll cast still can be used. The pale morning dun mayflies are hatching now, so I've taken off the nymph and put on a dry fly. While you can fish a dry fly upstream with a roll cast, I prefer to use the overhead cast. It's more accurate, allows me to cast a little further, and doesn't get the fly as wet as the roll cast does. The overhead cast it uses the same basic casting motion as the roll cast, except now we have to lift fast enough to get the line up in the air. So we're going to begin with a smooth, slow motion, then accelerate very quickly and stop sharply in this position. Then pause for just a second so the line has a chance to straighten out behind, move down and forward just like we did with the roll cast, and stop in this position. Just like this. Pause, smoothly forward. Lift smoothly, stop, down and stop. After the line straightens out, you can drop the rod tip if you want. Lift, stop, wait, smoothly forward, stop. You've got to start very smoothly, and then stop sharply. There are some common mistakes that people make with the overhead cast. The first of these is trying to pick the line off the water too quickly, so it rips off like that. Obviously, that'll spook any fish in the area. The other common mistake is taking the rod back too far, like this, and that throws the line on the water behind you. I guess if you want to catch fish back there, that's fine. The other mistake is not waiting long enough. Buggy whipping. If you can afford to pay $2 for every fly you crack off, that's fine also. Then the other mistake, and probably the one that most people make, is starting forward too quickly, kicking the rod, hitting it like that hard, bang like that. The line jumps down, ties a knot right in the leader for you. Start forward very smoothly, smoothly, smoothly. The secret to good casting is casting smoothly. Now let's see if we can get a fish. Remember, because we're fishing in a riffle, we can get quite close to the fish. So if you see one rise, work up to within about 25 feet of it before you make your cast. Fish feeding on dry flies in a riffle like this are watching a rather narrow current lane called the feeding lane. It may only be a few inches wide, so you want to try to put it right straight upstream from the fish. Cast it upstream about four feet from where you see the fish rise. Remember, the water's moving, so when you see the rise, the rise form is going to drift toward you, so the fish is actually upstream a little bit further than you think it is. One very good place to find feeding lanes in Riffley water is sort of at the edge of the heavy current tongues like this, where the insects spin out. I'm using a leader that's 10 to 12 feet long, and it has about a three or four foot tippet on it, so I get a very nice natural drift with the fly. Just cast it up there and allow it to drift down naturally, just like that. Watch that fly on the water. If you see the fish take it, just lift the rod until you feel the weight of the fish, and then back off. Now, when you're fishing in fast water like this, you have to do something with all the slack line that's drifting back toward you. So I use a method I call line control. Let me show you how to do that. After you've made the cast, simply transfer it from your line hand under a finger of your rod hand and strip in the line at the same rate as it's coming back toward you. Then you have to shoot the line back out. You do that after you stop the rod in the forward motion. Stop the rod, let go of the line, it'll shoot right through your hand, transfer it under this finger, and bring it back at the same speed that the current's carrying it down to you. Make sure you make a smooth transfer from hand to hand. Don't go like this. Not only does it look awkward, it's very ineffective, and you've got to look at your hands, and as soon as you look at your hands, the fish is going to take your fly. This way you can cast, transfer, strip. You never have to look down at your hands. You can be watching out there to see if a fish takes the fly. After you've been fishing with a dry fly for a while, it tends to pick up water and get wet, so you need a fast, efficient way to dry the fly off. Best way to do this is with false casting. We're going to keep the line in the air and shake the water out of the fly. Use exactly the same casting motion that you would use for the overhead cast, but don't allow the fly to fall on the water. After you've made several casts and the fly is dry, you can put it right down again. A couple of other very useful uh, reasons for false casting are, first of all, to change direction. You can simply false cast around like this if you see a fish rising and cast over there. Another very useful reason for false casting is to lengthen line. Each time I bring the rod forward, I can simply shoot a little bit extra line like this. 
Hey, there's a fish. Let's see if we can get to that one. He's looking. He's looking. He's got it. It's a pretty good fish, too. Woo! Like riffles, pools have sheltering lies, feeding lies, and prime lies. There are feeding lies down in the tail of the pool. The deep water in the center of the pool is a sheltering lie. There are feeding lies along the edge of these current tongues, and prime lies up at the head of this pool, like I pointed out earlier, for the riffle. You can't always fish up with a stream with a dry fly. Sometimes you have to fish across the current. So let me show you how to do that. If you cast a dry fly straight across a stream like that, the line will fall on the fast water, the fly will land on slow water over in those feeding lies, and then the line will pull the fly out of there and cause it to drag. That's an unnatural movement, and the fish will refuse the fly. The solution to this is to mend the line. The best mend is a reach mend. I'm just going to cast out and then reach the rod upstream so that the line lands on the fast water upstream of the fly. This prevents drag. If you want to get a little more line out there, you can make that reach mend, and then just about the point where you think the fly is going to drag, you can make an on-the-water mend, throwing the line back upstream like this, and you can add a little more line to it, just pull it off the reel and shake it out into the current. That gives you a nice, long, drag-free float. The spinners are falling, so I've come down here to the tail of the pool to try for some feeding fish. There are only feeding lies in the tail of the pool, so the fish here are going to be very spooky, and I have to approach them carefully and cast delicately. I can't approach from downstream because then I'd be casting up over that riffle. My fly would land on slow water, my line would land on fast water, and I'd get drag immediately. So I'm going to cast down and across stream. This will put the fly and the line and the leader all on one current speed. However, I can't just cast straight down or I'll get drag also because the water is sliding under the fly. So I'm going to use a parachute mend. To do this, you make a normal cast and then draw the rod back just before it hits the water. Then all you have to do is lower the rod tip as the line goes downstream and you can float that fly right over top the fish. Simply make a normal cast and then draw the rod back just before the line hits the water. And then as the fly runs downstream, simply lower the rod, keep pace with it. Sometimes you have to move the fly a little bit to get it right into the fish's feeding lane because you can't always cast as accurately as you need to. All you have to do is cast well above the fish, skate the fly a little bit to slide it right into the fish's feeding lane, then draw, drop the rod tip, run that fly right down to the fish. This down and across tactic is the best technique there is for fishing to leader shy trout, whether it be in the tail of a pool like this, or in a riffle, or in a big flat. Come on, fish. Got him. Right in the tail of that pool. Looks like a brown. All right, it's nice to be able to fool those smart old brownies. It's down and across approach. Getting that fly into the fish before the line and leader will do it every time. Oh. It is a brown and he's a jumper too. Nice fish. Not ready yet. Here he comes. baby.